the servant Abigail is heading to the royal palace in a carriage. A man across from her looks at her lewdly while putting his hand down his pants. Abigail looks away in embarrassment and walks to the door of the carriage. The man pinches her buttocks, causing her to fall off the carriage and get covered in mud. She knocks on the door of the palace, finds her cousin Sarah, and begs Sarah to offer her a job. It turns out Abigail was a noble lady. But her father's addiction to gambling ruined the family fortune, and he even gave her to someone else to pay off his debts. After years of being at the bottom of the ladder, Abigail decides to turn to her powerful cousin for a chance to get ahead. Her cousin Sarah is not only the queen's close friend, but also her lover. Queen and is in poor health and has a mercurial temper. The queen dotes on Sarah, whom she has grown up with, and puts all her affection and trust in her. She lets Sarah govern the country in her stead, and even gives her a palace. Sarah's status is honored, and she is powerful. She obviously looks down on Abigail, who is a poor relative from the countryside, so she makes Abigail a servant in the scullery. Abigail sleeps in a tiny room with a dozen other servants. Every day, she gets splashed with cold water as a bath and has to do the hardest, most tiring work. To add insult to injury, the other servants bully her. They deliberately add lie to her bucket, causing her hands to burn. Abigail has no choice but to suffer in silence. In the middle of the night, the queen has an attack of gout and her legs are in pain. The servants put raw beef on the affected area to ease the pain as per the doctor's request. Sarah takes care of her while chatting with her about the past. It is these memories that are unique to the two of them that make their bonds so strong and inseparable. Watching the queen suffer from pain, Abigail comes up with a cure. She knows a thing or two about herbs, so she rides up into the mountains and picks some Peleatus. She used a stone to grind up the herbs. While the queen is sleeping, she applies it to her legs, but Sarah is displeased when she discovers her actions. She thinks Abigail's overstepping her bounds. In a fit of pique, she asks Footman to take Abigail downstairs to the kitchen and orders the head chef to give her six lashes as punishment. The prime minister and other ministers gather at the queen's bedside to discuss the war. It is the early 18th century, and England is at war with France. Sarah and her husband, Lord Marlborough, are Whigs, and they support the war against France. The queen has no interest in politics and leaves everything in Sarah's hands. The long war had left the treasury empty and the resentment of the people growing. However, Sarah also decides to double the land tax. Tory leader Harley is furious. He wants a truce and to negotiate a peace deal with France. But Sarah and her husband Lord Marlborough refuse Harley without hesitation. Lord Marlborough is the commander-in-chief of the war. The war would bring him more benefits and enhance his position. So he and Sarah firmly believe that the only way to solve the crisis is to defeat France once and for all. The queen cares little for all this. The only thing she focuses on is the fact that her leg doesn't hurt so much. Now that Abigail's treatment is working, Sarah calls off the whipping. She thinks Abigail is very kind and has a sweet disposition. She sympathizes a bit with Abigail and arranges for her to live in a cozy single room. Abigail becomes Sarah's new maid, doing her chores. Since then, Abigail has been able to escape from her predicament and see more of the high society life but she isn't satisfied with the status quo. To get the queen's attention, Abigail pretends to cough and says she caught a cold while picking herbs for her. The queen is so impressed that she asks her name. At night, noble ladies and gentlemen come to the court for a ball. The queen is confined to a wheelchair to enjoy the music due to the pain in her legs. Sarah and Colonel Masham dance their hearts out in the center of the stage. Their dancing is a bit comical, but the intimacy between them arouses the queen's jealousy. The queen calls a halt to the dance and wants to piss Sarah off, so she summons Harley and agrees to do what he suggests, no increase in land tax. After being slapped in the face, Sarah realizes that she is in crisis, so she turns from her usual forcefulness to gentleness. She wheels the queen into her bedroom and pleases her with kisses. The childish queen soon gets over it and enjoys a sweet time in bed with her. Coincidentally, the scene is witnessed by Abigail, who is reading on the second floor. Abigail is too stunned to make a sound. She flees quietly on tiptoe. Just outside the room, she is caught by Harley. Harley asks her to go for a walk with him. Harley knows she's Sarah's maid, and he wants to make friends with her. By doing so, he could learn more about the Whigs and the Queen's plans, but Abigail rejects him, insisting that she would never betray her mistress's trust. Seeing her so naive and blind loyal, Harley pushes her into a ditch and asks her to reconsider. The next day, while hunting, Abigail tells Sarah everything Harley said last night. Abigail shows her loyalty to her and says she'll keep her secret. She hints that she knows about the affair between Sarah and the Queen. Sarah senses the implication of the threat. She fires an empty gun at Abigail and then warns her. Abigail frightened and promises she'll be careful afterwards, since Sarah has been busy running the court. She's had no time for the Queen. The Queen is in a mood and can't eat or have any fun. To get Sarah's attention, the Queen pretends to jump off a building. When Sarah learns of this, she immediately rushes over and drags her down to the floor. The queen holds her legs and pampers her, ordering her to stay. Sarah has no choice but to promise to visit her in the afternoon. 
But in the afternoon, there is another fight in Parliament over the war. Sarah is too busy dealing with the partisanship to leave the chamber. So she arranges for Abigail to go to the Queen's room and play cards with her. At first, the Queen is not pleased and wants to throw Abigail out. How could Abigail miss the chance to impress the Queen? She goes to the 17 rabbits the Queen has and releases them. Seeing her holding the rabbits in her arms, the Queen's depression instantly sweeps away. Because in the past, when she asked Sarah to greet the bunnies, Sarah refused. Sarah never gives in to the Queen's every request and says, Love has limits. In fact, these 17 rabbits have a special significance for the Queen. The Queen has lost 17 children in her lifetime. For every child she lost, she kept a rabbit. Seeing that Abigail is willing to play with her and feed the rabbits together, her favoritism towards Abigail has increased. Then Abigail takes the queen for a walk on the porch. Since the queen has never gotten over her trauma, she has a very weird personality and temper. One minute she's being moved by the music, the next she's on her feet yelling at the player to stop playing and get the hell out of there. Even though Abigail gets scared, she doesn't give up. To make the queen happy, she invites her to dance. In the process of swinging the body, the queen gets a feeling of fun and love. As soon as Sarah opens the door, she sees the queen smiling very happily. And that's usually something the queen only does when she's by her side. Sarah senses a threat and takes Abigail to the hunting garden. Sarah says that Abigail's job is done, and that she'll be taking care of the queen from now on. Abigail knows she's trying to get rid of her. But she is not willing to be a servant. She shoots the prey. The blood splatter on Sarah's face is her signal to wage war on her. Then the queen sends for Abigail. This makes Sarah jealous. She storms into the queen's room and chokes her. Before the queen can reply, a maid brings in a lobster. The two have to pretend nothing happened and stop their confrontation and flirting. In the middle of the night, Harley breaks into Abigail's room and asks her for information. This time Abigail doesn't say no to him. Because by now she realizes the importance of an ally. She reveals that the queen, under Sarah's influence, intends to double the tax on landowners. In order not to be manipulated by the Whigs, Harley chooses to make a preemptive strike. In Parliament, the queen is about to read out a tax increase. Harley suddenly interrupts her and rises to speak. He exhorts the chamber to roar a mighty hurrah for Her Majesty in her brilliant decision to not raise the land tax. He then cites the many disasters that would result from a doubling of the tax rate and praises the queen for her cleverness. Watching things deviate from the plan, the queen is thrown into a panic. With the Tories all energized, the Queen pretends to faint and escapes the embarrassment. After the meeting, the Queen feels humiliated. She doesn't know what to do and feels she can't hold on any longer. Sarah persuades her not to worry. She'll sort it all out. The Queen returns to her bedchamber saddened. She is shocked to see Abigail asleep in her bed. Abigail hurriedly apologizes and dresses to leave. The Queen couldn't get enough of her curvy body. This plays right into Abigail's hands. At night, the Queen summons Abigail to her bedchamber. She asks Abigail to rub her legs. Abigail, of course, provides the queen with more than her fair share of quality services in bed. When Sarah finishes her preparations for war, she wants to have a chat with the queen. To her utter shock, Abigail goes under the queen's covers. The next day, she uses the excuse of looking for a book to throw one book after another at Abigail. Sarah no longer gives her any chance to get to the top. She demands that Abigail go back to the scullery and find a position. In order to confront her, Abigail smashes her face with books until it bleeds. She sits on the queen's doorstep and cries loudly, drawing sympathy from the queen. Her ploy works. The queen orders Abigail not to be dismissed and appoints her maid of the bedchamber. Abigail now has a formal reason to stay with the queen 24 hours a day. Sarah realizes her position is in jeopardy and decides to fight back. As the queen takes a mud bath to remove the toxins from her body, Sarah steps into the tub. She puts her condescension aside, smears mud on her face and accompanies the queen in a game of tag. Then they return to the court. Sarah talks to the queen about their childhood, about things that only the two of them know. Abigail is an outsider and can't get a word in edgewise. The queen keeps Sarah and orders Abigail to leave. In fact, the queen is aware of the rivalry between the two of them. She has all the power, and she does it on purpose, because she enjoys being loved. Seeing that the situation is getting worse for her, Abigail intends to play hardball. The next day, when Sarah comes to the bedchamber, Abigail makes tea. She drops a drug in Sarah's tea and hands it to Sarah. Sarah's attention is focused on persuading the queen to make a speech about raising taxes to support the war effort. So she completely fails to notice anything wrong with Abigail. After drinking the poison tea, she rides away from the palace. While riding in the forest, Sarah suddenly feels unwell and falls off her horse. The reins catch on her feet, and she's dragged unconscious for a long time, until a bod finds her at night. The bod takes her back to the brothel, saves her, and treats her wounds. In Sarah's absence, Abigail chooses to formalize her mutually advantageous friendship with Harley. She wants to be a lady again, but she doesn't want the queen to feel like she wants something from her. 
so she asks Harley to help facilitate her marriage to a nobleman. Once she marries a noble, she'll be free of her servant status and be recognized as the queen's favorite. So Harley goes to the palace and meets the queen. Harley tells the queen that his friend is in love with Abigail. The queen gives her permission for Abigail to marry his friend. In return, Abigail would speak favorably of the Tories to the queen and take Sarah's place in the court. Harley thus gains access to more of the queen's secrets and her decisions. Shortly after, Abigail gets married to Colonel Masham, who's obsessed with her. The queen even gives the newlyweds a couple of apartments in the East Wing as a gift. On their wedding night, Abigail sits down to offer her new husband, Colonel Masham, some solace. She doesn't really have a crush on Masham, she just thinks he's the best man to marry her. In fact, it's her scheming that makes Masham so enamored of her. When Masham first met Abigail, she was digging for herbs. That piqued his interest because he'd never seen a lady do anything so vulgar. Having been in high society for so many years, he is tired of looking at demure and reserved ladies. Abigail knows exactly what he likes. So she tries to find many opportunities to seduce him. Abigail always plays hard to get with him. Whenever Masham is aroused by her, she turns him down. This makes Masham even more fascinated by her. After a while, the Prime Minister discovers Sarah in a brothel. Sarah's face is irreparably scarred from an accident. When Sarah returns to the palace, she is disappointed to find that everything has changed. Abigail had taken off her servant's garb and put on a gaudy dress. She goes to the queen. But the queen is horrified to see her scarred face. When she tries to make out with her, she kicks her out of bed without hesitation. Then the queen asks her where she's been all this time. Sarah lies that she met bandits. She escaped after a few days of bandit fighting. She doesn't talk about the fact that Abigail poisoned her because she knows that the queen is very fond of Abigail now and won't believe her. In order to regain her power, Sarah takes out the many love letters the queen has written to her. She coerces the queen to announce a tax hike and get rid of Abigail, or she'll publish the letters. The queen would be disgraced and discredited. This puts the queen in great danger. In the past, no matter how self-serving Sarah had been, she'd never have cared. But this time, Sarah has crossed the line. Although she loves Sarah dearly, she won't tolerate her threatening her throne. On the other hand, Sarah thinks the queen will still listen to her. She throws the letters into the fireplace and burns them. In fact, she never intended to publicize her affair with the queen. But she overestimated the power of love, not realizing it would be crushed by power. At Abigail's urging, the queen makes a ruthless decision. The queen tells Sarah to turn in her keys and drives her out of the palace. After Sarah's downfall, there are some drastic changes in British politics. Harley becomes the new prime minister, and Britain and France come to an armistice. Abigail replaces Sarah as the queen's new favorite. She moves into Sarah's luxurious bedroom and lives a life of luxury and debauchery in the upper class. With Sarah gone, the queen's gout worsened, her physical and mental state is getting worse and worse, and she is even less willing to meet with her ministers and manage the affairs of the country. Upon seeing the queen's depressed state, the former prime minister approaches Sarah and asks her to write a letter of apology. He needs Sarah to return to the queen so that she can help him and his party. Sarah chooses to submit. She writes heartfelt letter after heartfelt letter and sends them to the queen. But they never reach the queen. They are intercepted and burned by Abigail, seeing that Sarah still has a chance to win again. Abigail intends to destroy her once and for all. She comes to the queen and tells her that Sarah transferred war funds to her husband, but the army didn't receive the money. Her implication is that Sarah and her husband have embezzled large sums of money. At first, the queen doesn't believe it, but as time goes by, her anguish grows. She has no idea that Sarah was set up by Abigail. All she knows is that she didn't receive a single letter from Sarah. She believes that Sarah has abandoned her completely, so she finally makes an order that's just as cruel to her. She declares in front of all the ministers that Sarah and her husband are to be banished from England. After one fierce competition after another, Abigail finally wins. She gets everything she wants, but her ruthless and arrogant nature also comes out. While the queen is sleeping, she even steps on the rabbit. Although she eventually lifts her foot and lets the rabbit go, the queen sees it happen. The queen rises from her bed in a rage. Abigail hears the commotion and rushes to her aid. However, the queen mercilessly shrugs her off. She orders her to rub her legs and uses her head as a crutch. In effect, she treats Abigail like a tool. Being a favorite doesn't mean resting on one's laurels. Relationships are fragile when it comes to absolute power and profit. This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.